Hi, I'm Jesse Gale. I'm an eye doctor in Wellington. I'm um, going to tell you about glaucoma with normal pressures. So some people would call that normal tension glaucoma or normal pressure glaucoma. But most people would agree now that it's really just regular glaucoma, but without a high pressure. So I'll race through these because I, I hope they're familiar to you. Glaucoma is where your optic nerve is wearing out a bit faster than it should. So here's a cross-section cartoon through the optic nerve. And when we look down on the optic nerve, it has this, this tissue that's orangey colored called the rim. And uh, it's normally a, a thick, healthy rim of orangey tissue like that. And in glaucoma, as the nerve gets worn out and thinned out, it has characteristic changes in the shape of the optic nerve so that it has this big cup. And as the glaucoma gets thinner like that, I mean, as the nerve gets thinner and the glaucoma gets worse, the peripheral vision uh, changes in a, in a predictable way, affecting the peripheral vision before it affects the central vision. So I draw this diagram to explain glaucoma to people all the time. I say we're born with a million nerves, nerve fibers in our optic nerve. And as we get older, we're gradually losing them one by one. They disappear and die slowly. And glaucoma is a process where that's happening too fast so that your optic nerves might wear out before the end of your life. And one of the main things that we can do in, in looking after people with glaucoma is, is lower their eye pressure because we know that the raised pressure in the eye accelerates the wear and tear of the optic nerve and makes it wear out faster. And the way that we've traditionally thought about this is the idea that the eye has fluid flowing into it all the time and fluid draining out of it all the time. And the wall of the eye is quite robust and rubbery like a squash ball. And if there's a problem with the drainage and the pressure goes up, the part of the eye that gets the most stretched is the optic disc because that's the thinnest part in the wall of the eye. So that's our traditional understanding of why the pressure causes the optic nerve to get worn out. But the question for this talk is, um, how does the optic nerve get worn out if the pressure has never been high? And so we think that there are probably other factors in those patients that make their optic nerve more vulnerable. So here are some of the things that go through my mind when I have someone who has glaucoma with normal pressures. First of all, it's quite variable. Some people, their glaucoma gets worse quickly, but about half of people are very stable or progressing so slowly that they don't actually need treatment. And you can watch normal pressure glaucoma for quite a while before deciding that they're really getting worse and they really do need some treatment. If the optic nerve is getting worse from normal tension glaucoma, um, then sometimes I think to myself, is it really normal pressure or is the pressure sometimes higher? And that can mean bringing people back at different times a day to measure whether the pressure is up and down at different times. Uh, sometimes people give people a litre of water to drink and see to what extent the pressure goes up. And it may be that the maximum pressure detected that way indicates where the pressure can be at other times, maybe in, in bed at night. And the other thing I think about is, is whether people might have activities in their life that make the pressure high. So sometimes doing a headstand for a long period of time can put your eye pressure up, or wearing tight swimming goggles, or playing a tuba and, and blowing against resistance for long periods of time uh, can put your eye pressures up. We also think about the blood flow to the optic nerve. Um, some people have very high blood pressure and that can make their arteries thin and narrow and hard and that can make the blood flow to the optic nerve um, impaired. Um, but the other group of patients have normal blood pressure during the day, but it dips very low when they're asleep at night. And we think that uh, that might be a contributing factor in some people with normal pressure glaucoma, that having a low blood pressure that's abnormally low while they're asleep gives them periods of time when the, when the optic nerve is not getting a good blood supply. And one thing that we can do to manage that is to make sure people are not taking their blood pressure medications just before they go to bed. Uh, we know that people with glaucoma and normal pressures, that that is associated with having migraine and a, another vasospasm condition called Raynaud phenomenon where your fingers can go white and painful. 
we know that those things are related to normal pressure glaucoma and therefore they're probably relevant. It's also probably true that if you have a low pressure in your head, then the normal pressure in your eye is putting relative um, pressure backward on the optic disc. And so all of these things are known to be related to normal pressure glaucoma, and yet it's not, not clear how best we can uh, manage those issues in a way that will slow down the glaucoma. Uh, so it's important to remember that glaucoma with normal pressure is the same as other glaucoma, and the established treatment for glaucoma is to lower your eye pressure. Uh, and we know that normal pressure glaucoma still responds to pressure lowering. It's still the right treatment. And so if your glaucoma is progressing and the pressure in the eye is consistently around 12, then sometimes that means we have to aim for really low target pressure. That can be tricky to achieve. It's an area of great interest um, whether there are treatments that protect the optic nerve in other ways that are independent of the pressure. And so here are some of the treatments that are currently sort of on the table um, for treating glaucoma where pressure is, is not the predominant problem. So bromonidine is a glaucoma drop uh, which lowers the pressure and unfortunately it's also one that's not very well tolerated. It has a higher chance of causing side effects and uh, allergy and irritation of the eye. Um, but lots of people can tolerate it for quite a long time and there, there's one study that suggests that bromonidine has extra protective benefits more than just the pressure lowering effect. Uh, ginkgo is a, um, a plant and extracts from ginkgo um, are thought to be helpful both to protect nerve cells but also to improve blood flow um, and there's some evidence that that might be helpful in glaucoma patients. Um, a recent one is vitamin B3 uh, which has some, some strong evidence of, of protecting nerve cells in, in animal studies um, but now some early human evidence that it improves the uh, the health and the stress signals from, from human uh, optic nerves. Um, and then another that I think is very exciting is the idea of gene therapy, where you just have a single treatment with one injection uh, that introduces some new gen genetic instructions into the eye, and that um, can allow your nerve cells to uh, produce factors that are protective and, and make the optic nerve more resilient. So I think that's the last slide, and um, here's, my, here's my summary. Glaucoma with normal pressure is the same as other glaucoma. It's wear and tear of your optic nerve, which is sensitive to the eye pressure. There are other factors that can make your optic nerve more vulnerable, including genetic factors and also blood flow factors. The management of glaucoma with a normal pressure is the same as other glaucoma, we lower the pressure to a target which slows it down to an acceptable rate. And we're all very interested in whether there are treatments that protect your optic nerve other than pressure lowering, um, and there are a slow, slowly emerging collection of treatments. Thanks for your attention.